In this video, we're looking at the FCC ID search capabilities. And here at the FCC.gov website, you can search for the FCC code, which is available on the back of most USB adapters. It's available on access points and so forth. It's called the FCC ID. And you're going to find that it's divided into a couple of parts, the grantee code and the product code. And you'll have to look at the particular code you're dealing with to try to find the appropriate breakout of the grantee code versus the product code. In this case, the full FCC ID for this adapter that we're looking at, which is the Edimax EW-7822UAC 802.11ac adapter, that code is NDD 9578221212. And when I place NDD in the grantee code field and the 9578221212 portion in the product code field, I can click on search and see if that's the right one. And in this case, it happens to be. Now, the key thing to notice here is to look at what it is you're wanting to evaluate. Now, first of all, regardless of whether you do a upper frequency of 2462 with a lower frequency of 2412 or a lower frequency of 5745 with an upper frequency of 5825, it really doesn't matter. All of them are going to give you the same internal screenshots, but you're going to get different reports on these frequency ranges if you want to look at what the spectrum looks like with this particular adapter in those ranges. In this case, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the detail of the 2412 to 2462 frequency range for this particular adapter. So when we click on detail, and click OK, then it's going to show us several different documents that are available to us. One of these documents is the availability of external photos and internal photos. So if I click on internal photos, then I can actually see a PDF document that's going to show me the internals of this adapter when it begins to be taken apart. So here we're already seeing the antenna being taken apart, so we can see what that looks like. It's a printed circuit board antenna in this case and we can see how it is wired into the actual circuit board of the USB adapter. And when we continue on, we can get a close-up of this connector that connects into the board. And then you can actually see soldering points into the antenna. And here's the antenna completely taken out of its casing and set to the side. When you go further, you'll actually be able to see the internal components of the circuit board itself. So here we can see the chipset this uses, which is the RTL8812AU chipset. So you could go and do a search on that chipset to see what this 11AC chipset is capable of. Going further, you can see the connector for the cable there. And here we're seeing more chips that are used on the actual board itself. And as you can see then, it's showing us different components within the board that are used for this to function appropriately. When we go back, we can see the RF exposure as well. So if you go into RF exposure, this is going to show you information about the RF exposure. If you go into the test report, you're going to get to see the actual test report for this document, which again is going to be a PDF file. So these are all PDF documents that you can view at the website. And so here we're seeing the test report. And if you take a look at it, you'll see what I was saying. When we scroll down just a ways, we'll get to where we can actually see the RF output from the device. So here we're actually seeing AC power line emissions for this device. It's showing us the spectrum analyzer that's actually used. Here's the worst emission plot that it found for 11B, 11G, HT20, and HT40, which is the most you could do in 2.4 gigahertz. Here's the RF output power limit that we can see here making sure that it complies with regulations. And as you continue through, you'll see many different reports on the different radio chains and the modulation being used and then the output power on those chains. Here's an output power plot as well for 11B and 11G and also for HT20 on port 1 and on port 2 and HT40 on port 1 and port 2 and so forth. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of information in these FCC ID search reports that allows you to see things that the vendors do not necessarily show you or tell you about. 
but you can understand even when it's not configurable what the output power is, you can find out what the output power is. You can see what the spectrum masks looks like and understand the quality of that particular radio and antenna combination that you're looking at. So remember, when you have a device and you want to learn more about its capabilities, take a look at the FCC ID search. It just might give you the information that you need.